Hey everyone, this is a physicist talking about an electron and I want to talk about this because I am so frustrated hearing all the lies about the electron. Well, the first lie is right here. So take a look at this picture. Um, basically this is a um, Bohr model of an atom. So people used to believe this and people still teach this as truth. This is absolutely lies, lies, lies. And there's actually, someone did a picture of this and, and wrote lies all over it because it is. So this basically represents that there's some kind of a nucleus. And even if we imagine the different protons and electrons that make it up, um, it doesn't make it any more correct because it represents that electrons are particles in orbiting in distinct, very planet-like very planet orbitals around a sun, right? So that's the, the, the huge fallacy, right? So the electron is one of the three subatomic particles. We have the, the neutron um, and the proton, the neutron being actually the um, proton and the electron merged together. So yeah, if you put those together in like a star, yeah, you can create a neutron star. That's how they come about. Um, so another cool little fact you, you learn there. So here's the fallacy. Okay, imagine my cursor is an electron. And imagine it's a, um, I guess, a sphere. Okay, because while an electron is free from an atom, while it's escaped and it's on its own, it has um, its own energy, it is, in fact, very particle-like. So we have this uh, particle moving in a straight line. And as it comes close to the atom, once it starts to become captured, it actually falls into the energy, um, into the energy levels it ceases to become this particle that it is right now. It actually turns into a big cloud. And mostly kind of a cloud of mostly equal density as it falls in. You got this big cloud, right? And as it comes in, it'll actually become a cloud that's actually more dense towards the center because, right, we've got positive charge in the center. So that's pulling the charge in. So it's not going to be equal density. It's going to be kind of a, a cloud that's weighted towards the center. And um, so if you take if you do a Google search, um, you'll see, it's, it's interesting, on, on Electron, you'll see uh, lots of Bohr models. Um, people think you're too stupid to understand that, that, cloud, that electrons are clouds when they're in an atom. And really, that's the truth of it. And so, but they'll tell you the, the truth of that part, at least the nucleus actually looks somewhat like that. Um, protons and neutrons are vibrating, um, you know, bouncing against each other, but mostly in this core. So, um, now some of the things you'll, you'll see also are, is this propagation of the idea that electrons are these balls um, inside the atom captured in these distinct energy state, energy levels. So you've got here an S level with two electrons, and you get this idea that they're kind of following the leader in a circle around and around, right? Um, it's absolute fallacy. It's absolutely false. Um, and then, of course, as more, you know, so I guess that the best way to understand is if we were to strip all the electrons off by, by basically heating up so hot that the, the electrons are thrown off, and so we now have plasma, just a, a proton neutron core, then as uh, it cools off and electrons fall in, the, the first one is going to fall into this base orbital, the closest one, because electrons like positive charge, they're going to go as close as they can. And then the second one will fall into the same one, right? And they're going to orbit round and round. Wrong. Wrong about that part. But then f subsequent electrons are going to fall into the next level because there's too much negative charge here. They're going to be pushed out a little bit, right? Are they going to fall round and round as you get more and more coming in? Um, a total of eight, right? In this next level, this is a, a, a P level. No, they're not going to fall around. So, okay, what's the real model, right? So this, this kind of gives you an idea of, I guess, how many are in each level, and that they're farther out, and then that there can be valence electrons, as we call them, for chemical bonds. Um, so there can be this outer shell that needs to be filled or needs to, you know, we, we need to have a complete shell. Okay, got that. But beyond that right there, this is absolute. If I could put a big X in here, can I? No. Big X, big X. This is absolute fallacy on what it looks like. It doesn't look anything like this. But if you search electron cloud, you get some closer pictures. You can see it's more dense here, right? You're seeing that it's darker towards the center. But at the very center, it's, it's not going to be. 
And then as you go a little bit further out, this is like the 1S. It's kind of like a spherish cloud, a spherical, spherical cloud. Okay, so we got the spherical cloud. And there are two electrons that actually they are not particles, they're clouds. Um, the two electrons are together in this cloud. Okay, so we got that. Two electrons, electrons like to be in pairs, interestingly enough. And so, good. A lot of these are showing the electron cloud. Some of these are keying off onto wrong ideas, absolutely wrong ideas. Um, but, I don't know, whoever made this, they, good intentions, but good intentions plus lies equals what? Yeah, not good. I don't know. It's not good. Good intentions, and they're not good. Okay, so that's why good intentions don't mean anything. Um, it's not to me. You, you have to have good come out of good intentions. So, all right. A um, lot of fallacies here. Interestingly enough, some of these diagrams actually do start to give you more cloud-like pictures of what the electrons start to look like, but most of them are, are the simple and incorrect Bohr model, which people actually used to believe. They used to believe this kind of a picture of an atom. Uh, some of these others, when you see orbitals, right? So even when we do a search on electron cloud, there's a lot of fallacies. When we look at orbitals, you start to get something that's more accurate, um, even this one right here. So um, I pulled up this one. This is a 1s, and then these are the p's. So you know, you've got 1 and 2, 1 and 2, 1 and 2. The electrons like to be in pairs. And um, so there's our 6 and 8, right? There's our 8 electrons right there. Okay. So then there's the d orbitals. These are going to be further out. So if you saw the s orbital, it would be a really small one right in here, really close in. The p ones would all be going out there different ways, and all these clouds, of course, would be overlapping to some degree. Um, but because you have all this negative charge in here, these p clouds are pushed out because the negative and negative, they push each other away, right? So you can't have all the negatives right in a small little place here. So I kind of wish that these they had blown up these like the P's and even the D's, so they looked larger and they looked farther away from the center. So you could kind of imagine these guys are fitting down here in the, in the small part in the center. And then, so as basically when I talk about more electrons coming into an atom or falling into an atom, all I mean is if you have an atom with, sufficiently, um, with a sufficient number of protons, it's going to attract um, electrons. And if you start from a fresh slate where there are, there's nothing, there's not even an S, um, you're just going to have this inner core of protons and neutrons. Um, each electron that is allowed to be captured into this plasma is, is going to fall into these orbitals, and they're going to fall into further and further out orbitals um, until finally the number of electrons and the number of protons are equal. And then you have, you have an atom there. Um, okay, so, and then these F1s are going to be much further out. So, um, Electron cloud diagrams kind of gives you an idea. Now, I want one last thing is to note that when you see these dots, and sometimes even when you hear people say stuff like um, probability, probabil locations of electrons in an atom, this is um, this should be confusing you because it's not accurate. There are probable locations of uh, electrons in an, an electron wave with diffraction outside an atom and so as you capture each sub subsequent atom it's gonna f it's gonna f make dots um, as you capture it like on film right it's gonna make dots as, as each one collapses it, its wave um, so it's called this wave uh, equation into dots um, and so you start to see something that looks like a cloud basically the uh, electron is showing where it's most likely to be by the thicker parts of, of the cloud, by the denser parts. But um, the dots themselves, when captured, are simply uh, collapsing uh, electron waves. They're, they're basically the electrons themselves. So you're not really seeing the wave. You're not really seeing the cloud. Inside the electron, you cannot collapse an electron cloud because it's captured and it's, it's in, uh, it has an energy state. So let me show you the energy states. 1s is an energy state. Um, P negative 1, that's an energy state. That's an energy state. This is the same energy state. Again, same energy state, same energy state, right? All on the P level, but in different locations because they don't like to be near, near each other. Okay, so these are energy states. 
So once they're they're collapsed, they're they're bound, they they're not free to leave because the electron is being pulled in by the nucleus, the positive charged nucleus. And so, um, please ignore um, these dots around a nucleus. Let's see, dots around a nucleus. Yeah, it says nucleus and dots around it because it's not really. You can't capture. I mean, you can't. It's captured. You can't collapse the electron inside there. So the dots, you should really think of them more as kind of um, density. Um, you should imagine the saying that, you know, basically more dots means that more of the electron is there than anywhere else. Okay, so if I can kind of show you this, this probability density of, of the electrons, basically the idea is if you look at this 1s right here about the, the nucleus, yeah, there, if there are two electrons here, then basically both electrons are a cloud. They aren't any of these dots at all. So the cloud is more dense here, kind of like you've been maybe through denser fog and, thi and thinner fog. It's kind of like that, okay? Uh, except uh, you think about the fog as being one part or two particles. That's um, not particles. You know, one or, one or two electrons. Um, it's basically the fog is them. So that's one of the cool and fascinating parts about electrons. Um, just understanding that these particles become non-particles. They really literally become clouds. And um, this tries to show you again kind of a cloud. It's not any of these dots. It's just a cloud. Um, I, so I want you to know the truth because I think you're smart enough to understand clouds. And you're smart enough, smart enough to understand that clouds can have different shapes like these. Um, different shapes like the, this is a cool picture actually. Thank you to uh, the UCSB. Um, pretty sure that's a, a college. So kind of like this, and then these are models that we use to try to understand the shapes of these clouds, but kind of like this except more dense um, in certain places than others. So yeah, some really funky shapes in a, in a lot of these, but that's just how the equations work, the wave equations work, and that's really what the what the uh, clouds look like um, to to varying sizes. So some of the smaller spheres and out at at, at, at two s, you know, so s clouds in the in the second level, you know, they're going to be larger spheres. So that's what I mean by two s or one s is the is the first level s orbital. It's a sphere. Two s is going to be the second level uh, s orbital, which is a larger sphere. And the same thing with uh, these p's. That the one p's are going to be, you know, closer in and smaller, and then the, the let's see, the two p's are going to be second level, um, past the uh, the two s, and they're going to be larger and further away. So I kind of wish they showed that kind of a diagram when they show the electron cloud models. I really haven't seen that, but I think it might be useful. So I hope you understood uh, what I was saying there about electrons being clouds, and and not particles. And basically, the, the Bohr model is like this, completely incorrect. There is not a particle electron right there. It's a, it's a cloud with different densities. So now, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it might be useful to, to think about um, the electrons being particles if you have to think about some concrete object when you're trying to do like valence uh, electron diagrams and trying to understand how things bond together and why, you know, Know, what bonds together with what, but um, I don't know. I I really don't like thinking about it like that. It's just the physicist in me. And there's actually I think I saw. Yeah, I thought this was so. This is a really cool picture. Something goes and shows the Bohr model of the atom, and then they go wrong, 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 wrong. Um, so I hope you remember that. And uh, maybe you can press your friends to show the, to tell them, hey, electrons don't orbit nucleuses. There is no orbit. They are like a standing wave. They're like a standing um, fog that just con continually just encompasses this nucleus. It doesn't move. It just is. It's a, a fog of a certain shape. Um, so I'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy this. Thanks.